Hello Internet, welcome back to our tutorial. Let's play, uh, I see we're deaf, so let's take off our headgear. Consume, in what, no. Oh, this is probably due to me updating for the first time since the changes to the contents, uh, the nested containers, so it looks like it's dumping all fluids that are in our inventory. That's a, a bummer. Uh, because it changes the containers that they were previously contained in. Let's go inside and make sure it hasn't dumped every fluid that we have. Oh, eating a lot of my inputs as well. I don't know what that's about. Okay, so our fluids look like they're intact. For some reason, it just removed what was in our inventory. That's okay. You'll see we still have this old inventory system. Uh, oh, no we don't. This is... Hang on a minute. Let's drop everything. Again, if you haven't heard about the uh, nested container changes, they are something that is, uh, I made a video about, just as a cursory, yep, still getting that error, just as a cursory informative video. Um, it has changed uh, over the course of the last couple of days. We're already seeing some differences, so that video is gonna go out of date very quickly. But the point of the video was to answer a lot of questions that people were already having. So I was seeing a lot of people asking questions about it, so I thought I would make a quick video. It's something that's changing all the time. So for instance, our inventory layout is currently much more like what it used to look like, whereas in that video it looked very different from this. So it's already undergoing changes. You'll see we have the categories back, which is something we did not have in that video I recorded. So even though these things are being contained in the duffel bag, they're um, still being listed by category, which is great because we can now category. Uh, can we? Nope. Can we category drop? We can. Oh, I literally just did it, so I know I can. So that is a change. Um, and then if we want to look in the duffel bag, we can do that. What? Uh, it says 30 plus items. I didn't think I had that much. Oh, it's counting all the cash cards and things. Ah, that makes sense. They're counting cash cards individually. I see that's been fixed as well. It was listing them all one at a time. Now they're they're back in a stack, so that's nice. Um, yeah, definitely, definitely changing things. I also see our encumbrance seems to be appropriate. Uh, we, in the test episode, were not getting any encumbrance from our bags, so it looks like that may have been fixed as well. We can test that by dropping the duffel bag we're at. Oh, no, now it says zero. We're at 12 liters. In the drop menu, it says zero. I don't know why. So we're at 12 liters. Pick this up. And we're at 0.25 liters. So yeah, the, the duffel bag is the majority of things that is contributing to our, to our storage, um, obviously, and our volume. So that seems to be working again. I don't really want to spend the episode talking about that uh, because I did just do a basic episode on it. So if you haven't seen that, uh, probably would have popped it up in the corner already by now, but you can find it on the channel, and it's in this uh, tutorial playlist, so if you just go back a few episodes, you'll see it. Anyway, um, we're going to do some vehicle work, I think. Um, I do want to touch on, people have been telling me, oh, what are you doing? Oh, he's he dropped his fluids as well, <laughs> looks like. Uh, I would like to see the items underneath him. We can't pick it up. Maybe he's wielding that item. I can't really tell what's going on with him. Um, I have had a lot of people ask me over the course of this series about faction camps and whether or not I'm going to cover faction camps. I know nothing about faction camps. It's not something I've ever done before. I usually just completely ignore my NPCs. And I was under the impression that you actually needed um, like four NPCs to start a faction camp. Apparently that's not correct. You can start with just one. So what I think we will do, and then someone today, I saw their comment, suggested uh, that I use the evac shelter as our starter for the camp. What I would like to do instead of that, one, we've already looked at a lot of the interesting buildings in this town, so I would like to be moving on. So what I would prefer to do, this is a nice big town. This is a nice big town or it looks like two towns or three towns spawned over top of each other here, actually is what that looks like. Um, so what I would like to do is come kind of in between those two loot opportunities because they both hold, you know, hold new interesting things. 
and I would like to find like a an empty space in kind of the the country in between them, and drop a fa- faction camp there. I it used to be that you needed a empty field to start one. I guess you can use buildings now since people suggested the evac shelter. But I would like to start it more or less in an empty fill field and then just build a few little shacks myself because I thought that would be fun. Uh, again, I don't know how faction camps work, so I don't know if that's something I can even do. Um, but we will probably look into that when we're ready to move on. But like I said, we're going to spend at least a few days expanding our vehicle. We're getting to the point in the game where we're starting to see more monster evolutions. This is usually when I kind of stop playing, to be honest with you. Usually by like midsummer, I'm done. And we're not even in summer yet. But usually by midsummer, I will bail on a series because I get really bored doing a lot of this. Like, yes, some people really enjoy expanding their vehicle into ridiculous monstrosities. Some people enjoy faction camps. Some people enjoy getting super mutated and super bionic out. I don't really like those things. I like the early game. I like spawning in a location with nothing and having to find everything, build everything yourself, equip yourself and, and stuff like that. So I often get very bored later in the game. And uh, yeah, I just, uh, it's not that there's anything wrong with Cataclysm mid to late game. I just don't enjoy it very much. So I'm not sure how much of this I'm going to actually get done, but we're going to Keep playing. I'm not going to cancel the series or anything. There are still some things to talk about, most notably faction camps. That's the thing people want. Seems like uh, people want to hear about. Um, I didn't give a very good mutation episode, so I thought, you know, eventually maybe we'll do a little bit more inform, you know, informative stuff regarding mutation. I'm not super into it, but I mean, as we've discussed, it's not something that appeals to me very much. But, um, you know, people like mutating. I know people like mutating. Uh, I think our battery should be dead. Yeah, so we'll swap out. Now, at least this time we have the benefit of actually having other medium batteries, so we don't have to constantly wait for this to recharge. We can just grab the next battery. Um, go ahead and flip on the charger as well, since these are all pretty dead. Reload the welder, come back and continue installing frames. Yeah, so I don't have a, a lot on the agenda. Uh, I thought we would expand the vehicle a little bit because I would like a slightly larger vehicle, especially if we're going to be hitting the road. We're going to need a lot more in the way of storage. Uh, let's take off these corner pieces because they're angled, and I'd rather that look nice. We do have some angled ones up front from the vehicle we started with. Um, you can kind of see here these are actually angled in they're meant to be where the vehicle wraps around so there is a very slight hint that this is a is a wrap you can tell by the solid line here um so we could probably deal with that as well i don't know how much i care about that but we'll figure it out we're also in lieu of boards we're going to put stow boards on we discussed the stow boards previously they function as boards so they don't let light in which is what we need in order for this to be a um, enclosed area for us to sleep in, but they also provide a small amount of storage. So I will often make the exterior of the vehicle stow boards, that way I can stash less important equipment out there. So um, typically what I do is put the valuables on the interior. Why are we out of, we're out of sheet metal. Uh, no, we have sheet metal, we're out of welder already, okay. So we'll unload, um, and and usually I put less valuable stuff in the stow boards, you know, on the off chance that they would get destroyed. So that's where I like to keep like my clothing, you know, stuff that you don't need every day, stuff that's not that valuable or important. Um, so I will just dump those things. Looks like these batteries didn't really charge. Why why didn't the batteries charge? In fact, I thought I had two fully charged batteries when I. I had two fully charged medium batteries when I turned this on. Because I picked up one of them. And why aren't they charging? Batteries, minus 5W. Because the batteries are dead. Why are the batteries dead? There wasn't that much to charge. Was it? 
Oh, probably going into the jackhammer, all these medium batteries, the light disposable, no, not the disposables. Maybe the heavy battery wasn't charged. I don't know what ate up all of our charge there. And why they're not charging faster. I guess just because there's multiple batteries. I don't really know how that works and how it prioritizes batteries, so don't don't hate me. I don't know everything. In fact, I know very little. I just pretend I know things. Looks like we have more rotten food, so we'll go ahead and pull those out of here. We are going to continually have rotten food. Um, oh, we have cracklins in our inventory. Actually, don't want to eat the cracklins. Trying to avoid the negative health things. I would like our character to be a little healthier than we are. So what do we got in the way of edible food? Lemons? I mean, I don't want to subject my guy to eating raw lemon. I like lemons, but... Oh, why... why uh? We have a lot less stuff than we did before, don't we? This menu was much larger before. Look at all these, yeah, look at all this food. Why is that not displaying? Doesn't look edible in its current form. Yeah, but I have like jars of pickles and stuff. Dehydrated fruit, dehydrated meat. Um, and we have all these cans. Uh, like we have canned chicken right here. It's not available. Hmm, what's going on with that? I don't like that. Medium tin can of chicken. Canned chicken, bright white chicken paste. It's not empty. Yeah, wheeled the chicken can, store in inventory. So this is a bug with uh, nested containers. Picking up cans, are um, cans are being treated as open. Uh, for the purposes of storing them so they can't be stored otherwise you will spill their contents now that it's in my inventory I can eat the canned chicken and you'll see there's a spoilage timer on it because as soon as I picked it up the can shifted from the previous sealed can to the currently open can so if we uh, it also closes the eat menu uh, which it's not supposed to do so it looks like there's some stuff going on, you know. Uh, again, this is one of those things you got to bear with when you play the experimental version of Cataclysm. I don't really have a problem with it. I know some people just cannot tolerate that kind of stuff, but I always think that's silly because if you're playing an experimental... Like, people seem to confuse experimental with, like, just meaning up-to-date or, like, current version uh, which it does mean that, but it also means it's experimental. It's meant to be play tested so that people can find bugs and stuff like that. Like that's mainly, I would guess, why it's, uh, you know, the, like the main draw of experimental is that it is up to date. But the main drawback is that that means there are bugs and things. So I just uh, always get a little, think it's a little silly when people get upset over simple things like that. Um, it is a point of frustration, I guess, uh, to have all your cans suddenly open and untransportable. In fact, if they don't sort that out by the time we're ready to move bases, that could be a real problem for us because we will lose every canned good. Because as soon as we pick them up or transport them, they will be treated as open. I'm not sure why all this junk food is not showing up in the list. I guess they are in containers, so it's probably a container issue. So if we pick up like the, I don't know, something that's not really perishable so we don't waste it. Uh, here we have, now, where was the cereal? Search for cereal. Let's pick up a box of sugary cereal. And if we go to eat, we now have that available to us in this mess, in, in our inventory. But if we look here, it's not listed anywhere else, even though there are other sugary cereal things. So I can go ahead and I guess, oh, I see, it's being removed from the box. Yeah, so here we have a cardboard box of sugary cereal, but it's not actually contained in the box. I see. Yeah. So. Sugary cereal. Oh, no, it is. It's just. So the. Okay. So the container. How do we. Uh, there's. He told me there's a button for toggling. Yeah, semicolon. No, go back. Uh, semicolon. 
inventory semicolon. I see. Uh, also an issue because the semicolon is being assigned to an item, so it's actually preventing us from... So let's drop the kilt and wear the kilt, and it should be assigned a new letter. Nope, still a semicolon. So the key bind is actually still being assigned to the items in the inventory. So semicolon needs to be removed from the auto generated lettering list uh, for, for items. So we can't toggle to show item filters. I'm not gonna change the key bind because I don't want to uh, change something. But anyway, sorry, again, first episode with these issues. So I'm uh, not really good at this. So let's drop the kilt and now use semicolon and you'll see it toggles to the older and if we look, no, it's still not in the cardboard box. So why, in fact, this would imply that it's being stored inside the noise canceling headgear. Okay, I don't care. I don't care, it's fine. Uh, put the kilt back on. We really should upgrade our equipment. Why are we unhappy? Nomadic restlessness. Ah, yes. So the mutation that we got, uh, as we discussed, is something that will make us unhappy over time the longer we stay in an area. I believe we can circumvent this just by leaving. Uh, so if we walk down the street, it is gone. Then we'll go back. Obviously that is, oh, I see. So it stays in a location and the longer you're in that location, the more it stacks. Even if you leave and come back, it is tied to the location, not tied to, yeah, that is problematic. Definitely going to be a hassle. I don't think we've really looted all these houses here, so why don't we just go loot some houses to kill some time and uh, get our character to chill out about being at the base. Yeah, that nomad is really going to irritate me. We don't have the means to remove that particular... We can't remove that at the moment. Just dump the cereal on the ground, I don't care. Um, this is unsorted, we can drop the headgear. MP3, welder, okay, wheel the SIG, and oh, yep, should probably turn off the engine if we're going to be leaving. These are, it seems like it's charging them individually because that one medium battery has a lot of charge, but nothing else seems to. So let's just uh, shut all this off. We'll deal with that in the morning. Uh, turn off engine, and we'll go exploring to hopefully give that Nomad debuff a chance to dissipate. Our character is unhappy here. That is going to be a huge problem as we move forward, I think, because we're going to spend a lot of time in the base for a while. Thankfully, we do have this big old night vision radius around us at the moment, so that is a nice change. You'll see we're no longer unhappy since we got away. What we could do is uh, just pick up like a book, come up here, start a fire in one of the ovens, and just read here instead of reading uh, back at base, which would uh, help the, the mood debuff dissipate. Looks like we were already here. I didn't think we were, so that's not great. Really should mark things as explored when I explore them. Yeah, changes to Cataclysm. It's always an ongoing thing, uh, you know, and there's constantly people who are updating and changing the game. You know, I um, one of the reasons I released that nested container video so early, I was going to hold it until Thursday or Friday, but I ended up posting it on like Monday night or Tuesday, I don't remember. Um, and the reason I posted it is because one, a lot of people were asking questions, but also like I had already recorded it and I found out that they were already making lots of changes. So I was like, if I hold it for three days, it's going to be way out of date. So I might as well just release it answer the questions that some people have and, and just uh, let it shake out however it's going to shake out. So like um, we talked in that video about categories not being displayed because uh, they were displaying underneath the item that is containing them and uh, how I wanted category drop back. And uh, before I even posted the video, I was uploading the video and I was talking on Discord and Korg was like, oh yeah, I already, you know, that should be fixed like tomorrow. And I was like, oh. Neat, you know, uh, I should, uh, you know, put a thing in the video that says, hey, this is already being worked on. I never did grab a crowbar, did I? Give me something. 
No, don't smash. There's nothing in there for us. Let's just check the basement. We're wielding the gun, right? It is nice to have this huge night vision radius. So this is the old game basement or rec basement, whatever you want to call it. It's the pool table one. Um, basements are getting changed quite a bit. I've been noticing in the GitHub trail guide we don't really care about. I believe we've already found one. Spiked eggnog. That sounds pretty good. I actually really like eggnog. Of course, our character is lactose intolerant. Yeah, never mind then. That's horseradish. We can eat horseradish. So, not a great basement. Obviously, uh, not the high value basement we were hoping for. Nothing wrong with it, but uh, the one we're looking for generally is the gun basement. I don't think we've seen one since we've been playing this game. This is the hammer. Partially constructed house, no items because it's uh, still under construction. So, no furnishings, no nothing. So, nothing for us here. There's often some, uh, oh, the windows don't even open. There's often construction tools laying around. Like, this is a good place to find if you're looking for, like, a circular saw or something. We're spotting a rattlesnake somewhere, but it's not really a concern. Just break in. I don't really care. Looks like another leather skirt. Combat boots, nothing really interesting. Um, the thing with the faction camp is I feel like they probably are going to consume a lot of food. So mostly right now I'm looking for for food. I don't really know what you need with the faction camps, but seems like a safe bet that they're going to need food and drink. Oh, I just now noticed because everything is in containers, they're not being color coded anymore, which is a bummer because uh, now that I'm thinking about it, the number one way I identify food is by color. So like I see this is rotten. Normally that would be color coded kind of that red brown color. And I would know that it's rotten, but now I actually have to read the tags. I do hope they change that. I do really like having things color coded uh, so you can tell at a glance. Obviously, if we go into the eat menu, it's color coded. Like there, I picked up some cheese. Same with the eggnog because I didn't see them in red. So I didn't realize they were lactose uh, intolerant foods. So that's a bummer. Uh, hopefully that gets sorted. We'll take some beer. We're out of... Oh no, because the cans are being spawned as full uh, or as open. Yeah, so here... Are these things just loose or are they in containers? Because it just says cream soda. It doesn't say the container. Oh, they're down here. Okay. Mm, okay. I would prefer if these were listed as having their container. I don't know why. I don't think it matters. But in my head, I'm like, oh, I wish it said it was in a can. Anyway. Uh, so I feel like food is going to be at a premium for the faction camp. Of course, with the broken... Take a lantern, why not? Uh, with the broken uh, cans, it's going to be a little hard to gather up non-perishable food. Because as soon as we try to pick them up, it will um, convert the can to open. Here we see some chicks in that building. Um, again, we talked about how chicks will spawn from rotten eggs and most kitchens have eggs in them so they end up rotting and then birthing chickens oh, little brown chicks hello chickens oh and a rattlesnake you leave those chickens alone we're gonna bash it corpse of a rattlesnake yeah you don't eat those baby chickens I eat those baby chickens no I'm kidding uh bleach no uh yeah this is uh a little bit more annoying than I thought. It's not um, like super broken or anything. It's just a little quality of life stuff. Oops, sorry chick, didn't mean to murder you. I'm gonna open the doors. You go be free, chickens. Actually don't, because there are zombies. I don't want you to get eaten. A little pantry, tin can of corn. So again, as soon as we try to pick that up, yeah, we can't, can't do it. We'll take the yeast. Oh, it's a real bummer. Real bummer we can't take cans. Uh, maybe I should have rolled back for the purposes of recording. I don't know if we've explored all these. I'm just going to mark them all as explored. Uh, we have not been in this one, I guess. There's an open window around front. Bloated zombie. Oh, right in front of me. Hello. He's not seen us. I'm going to shoot him because they gas up the place and I don't like it. 
And that's going to draw some enemies. What am I north? You hear glass breaking. What am I near? Oh, we're right next to the ball field. That's bad because there was a giant horde right here. Uh, so we don't really want to go up there. Let's check from the street. Hearing. Uh, okay, we got a feral. I'd like to kill him before he's able to, to rush us. And uh, yeah, I don't know. This is like, uh, I mean, we've talked about it. This stage of the game doesn't interest me a whole lot. I get bored. Ah, listener, yes. So this is not a headless zombie. This is a listener zombie. They have very good hearing. So they are very likely to track you down in the dark. Especially if you're shooting bullets like a dummy. Yeah, I tend to lose interest at this stage of the game. It's a lot of little things. Like I said, I prefer the early game. Acidic zombie is bad. So we have not talked about the acidic zombie line. Uh, so let's talk about that, I guess. So uh, there are there are four videos on my channel. You can uh, check them out. I'll try to remember to link a card to the first one. Or rather to the acidic zombie video. I will say, full disclaimer, those videos are not very good. I was trying to be informative and made a couple jokes, but it just felt really forced and unpleasant. But you can check it out. It contains a lot of good information. It's a real bummer because like, the entertainment aspect is very, very low. But the information is solid information. So uh, there is a video for the acidic zombies in particular. Basically, this is a pretty standard zombie. They're not super fast or super dangerous or anything um, from a like hit points and armor perspective. What they do have going for them is a specific melee attack. So if an acidic zombie... Uh, so if a wretched puker, an acidic zombie, uh, or a corrosive get within one tile of you, they will do a special attack called Acid Barf. And what that does is vomit acid onto your character, which causes damage um, to a, whatever body part. I think it's a random body part, I don't remember. Uh, and then it creates a puddle of acid on the tile you're standing on. This puddle of acid is incredibly dangerous um, because... The instant it lands here, you instantly will take damage. You don't have time to get out of the way. You will take damage immediately. If you stand in that for any length of time, or even if you move out of it, you take that initial damage for standing on it, and you take some ongoing damage as you move on, and it will target your legs. Acidic zombies are the best way to get your legs broken in the game, in my opinion. Most reliable way to do it. They will very, very quickly reduce your leg health to zero, because... The initial barf attack can hit your legs, then the acid can hit your legs, then as you move away, the corrosive effect can hit your legs, and within a few turns, you can be down to like 10, 10 leg health, or worse, God help you if, you, if you encounter multiples or you can't move out of this tile, let's say we're surrounded, uh, we're probably going to die, because that acid is going to eat right through us. So, from a health and damage perspective, they're not super scary unless they're within one tile of you. And again, this attack is shared with the Wretched Puker. Wretched Puker is the pre predecessor to the Acidic Zombie. And the Corrosive, which is the highest tier Acidic Zombie. There's also a Spitter, which you can think of like Left for Dead Spitter. Um, they don't have the Acid Barf attack, but the other three do. So, in general, Acidic Zombies don't ever melee them. That's just a good rule of thumb. Um, run away. If you even think for a second they might catch up to you, you, you should shift from attack mode into retreat mode, right? Like if we're partially winded or whatever, do not engage this guy because you can't necessarily retreat. I would immediately dive into the house and try to lose him by going through other doors and closing doors behind me just because in melee they are incredibly devastating. So in our current situation, not really a big deal. We'll shoot him. Uh, and we will back up because even being two tiles away from him is a little bit close for my comfort. And uh, you'll see he went down pretty easily. Now the other thing to note about acidic zombies, all four of the acidic zombies, if you smash their corpse, which uh, remember we've been smashing corpses to pulp them so they can't resurrect, um, smashing an acidic zombie's corpse will give a chance of splashing acid on your character, which again can cause an acid tile, I believe, I believe it damages you, but I believe it also has a chance to create another acid tile. Could be wrong about that, but really don't do that. So what we should do, this is the acidic zombie, is we'll go into our advanced inventory. We covered this in an episode. Uh, we will select the tile that it's on, and we will select the tile at our feet, and we will move the acidic zombie's corpse. 
When they die, they produce acid on the ground, so you can't just step onto the tile. So you stand next to them, pull the corpse from here to here. It doesn't generate new acid tiles, so we're now safely on the tile with the corpse. We will butcher the corpse and we will go to dismember. You can dismember a corpse even in the dark. It doesn't take very long. 40 turns is kind of a lot if you think there are other enemies coming. In our current situation with gunfire, there could very well be enemies that come around this corner, but we'll go ahead and try to dismember it. Heard footsteps? Nah. Zombie spotted? Yeah. Uh, so we'll stop here. And of course, because the corpse is now here and there's no other stuff, we could just use the hauling menu. Oh, hello, Sproglodyte. I did not even... Where'd you come from? So this is, um, we saw the feral, I think they're called, what are they called? Leapers? No, they're the ones that make the leap attack. Feral hunters, I think. Uh, we talked about them before. They, they basically jump and they can jump pretty frequently. So if you try to retreat, they'll just jump over to you and keep attacking. This is the child version of that. Uh, in Cataclysm, there are obviously multiple types of zombies. Sometimes uh, for the children zombies, they get their own special version of these creatures. So we are seeing quite a lot more monster density coming, probably from the horde that was near the gun shop. Uh, so we may actually not be able to butcher that acidic zombie. It's actually not that big of a deal. Uh, you obviously don't want to deal with the upgraded versions of the acidic zombies. I would say that the corrosive is one of the most dangerous creatures in the game, uh, which is the highest tier evolution of the acidic zombies but it's also a very slow evolution i believe it takes <sighs> Jeez. okay so starting in the game you would see no acid zombies they would have to upgrade into acid zombies uh that would take eight days at minimum then to upgrade to a spitter would require another like probably 14 or 16 days and then the step from that to corrosive is 28 days so i guess if you got like perfect rolls you could potentially see one on day like 35 or 40 uh, but most likely you're not going to see them for a while but they are again one of the most dangerous creatures in the game in my opinion um if you bump into a corrosive and you don't take it seriously you very very likely to die so we're going to smash corpses and hopefully not hit the acidic zombie that's the acidic zombie. Again, we don't want to smash him because it could splash us with acid. Yes. Hello, Zambi. Shouldn't have been there. Uh, we're just going to wait a few turns. Not seeing or hearing anything. Go ahead and smash these corpses. Acid splatter is still on the ground uh, from when it died. They will dissipate over time. It dissipates faster if it's raining uh, or at least it used to. Saw a tough zombie up there. I would like to butcher this guy. Yes. Tough zombie. And uh, we discussed this previously. This is one of the reasons why I get bored with Cataclysm. Is uh, once you get a gun, you're constantly shooting and clearing out these enormous hordes. Which is very, very tedious. <sighs> and you're trying to do anything. And it's always just a long trickle of zombies. Admittedly, we're shooting a gun. So it's like, obviously, they're going to come towards... No, we were able to butcher, to, to dismember the corpse. The sounds we're hearing are down here, probably them breaking into these windows or into the house to our south. We've cleared out quite a few, but there are definitely more where they came from. Yeah, I just get bored with the constant shooting. And like, if you do it during the day, you end up in a situation where you're constantly being interrupted. We saw that in a previous episode. I was very complaining about it. I was not having a great weekend, that particular series of episodes. I think I unloaded a little bit too much in those episodes, uh, which I know really ticks people off. So uh, we might as well clear some of these. Why not? I like killing <laughs> in this game. So even though we don't need to kill these creatures, I, I'm just going to do it because I'm curious if this house has a basement. So we're just gonna, gonna deal with some of these guys. Doesn't look like there's a basement. There's a chipmunk in here. Oh, we're at 34 minutes. I should call the episode. Yeah, I don't know what to do here because uh, looting the corp, uh, the food is like, I guess like basically impossible at this point due to the, the cans and things being treated as open. So I don't know really 
I don't know what to do. Because uh, there's, like, we don't need any loot. And the main thing we would be looking for at this point, I thought we'd be able to see more of the horde. Man, you're pretty quick, huh? Are we in pain or something? Why are you uh, so fast when everything else seems so slow? Oh, I keep missing these child zombies. So here we have a snot gobbler. This is a uh, boomer. Uh, child version of the boomer. He did grab us, which is annoying. So there he exploded, and we've been boomered. I think we talked about this. It, it has a very small chance of making you nauseous. Uh, affects your vision. You'll see everything's kind of purple because we've been biled. Um, I obviously like the boomers from Left for Dead. More cargo spaces. I think we just go back to base and see if that nomad thing has dissipated. We should really call the episode as well. I don't know. I don't know what to loot uh, since cans are messed up. I guess we, I mean, we want to do vehicle work, but the nomad thing is a problem. I guess we'll just grab a book and move to a different house to read until the nomad thing starts to back off a little bit. There's no reason we can't split our time between a couple different houses. So, uh, uh, but yeah, let's call the episode. So for now, thank you for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed the episode. I'll be back with more tutorial series in the near future, and I'll see you in the next episode.